Welcome to Aging Together, a podcast dedicated to exploring the challenges and opportunities of caring for our aging loved ones. This podcast is a product of Caregiver Consulting and Healthy Solutions, a private consulting practice dedicated to helping you navigate the aging process with ease. Together, we will dive into a wide range of topics, including health and wellness, financial planning, caregiving, and more. This podcast is for everyone, whether you are an older adult looking to age in place, a caregiver seeking support and guidance, a young or middle-aged adult planning for the future, or simply someone interested in learning more about the aging process. I hope you'll join me on this journey. Let's navigate aging together. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode at Aging Together. I'm your host, Pooja, and this is a busy month. Not only is it Women's History Month, but it is also National Nutrition Month and Save Your Vision Month. I'll be scattering related topics throughout this month, so stay tuned. This is the eighth episode of this podcast and how fitting it is to be in March. Although three days shy, March 8th is the International Day of Women. In today's episode, I'm focusing on Women's History Month and taking a dive into gender-specific considerations when it comes to women and aging. The 2020 Profile of Older Americans reports that due to women's higher life expectancy, the majority of U.S. adults over 65 years of age are women. That's 30 million women compared to 24.1 million men. As women age, they face unique challenges and disparities compared to their male counterparts. In many societies, women are more likely than men to provide care for their family members, including children, elderly parents, and partners. The caregiving responsibility often falls disproportionately on women as they age. This can be physically and emotionally demanding and can also limit women's ability to work and save for their own future. AARP reports that the majority of caregivers are female at 65%, and more than 80% of them are caring for a relative or a friend who is at least 50 years old. When it comes to parental care, a 2014 research paper found an interesting relationship between sons and daughters when it came to caregiving responsibilities. It reported that while the amount of care that daughters provide is primarily impacted by personal constraints, such as a job or childcare needs, the amount of care that sons provide is associated only with the presence or absence of other team members, such as a sister or a parent's spouse. The author further explains that sons reduce their relative caregiving efforts when they have a sister, while daughters increase theirs when they have a brother suggesting that sons pass on caregiving responsibilities to their sisters. This is so interesting to me because I have a brother, and when I think about what happens when either of my parents need medical attention, I've always attributed it to me because I work in healthcare, whereas my brother does not. Aside from parental care, the research also suggests that because women tend to live longer than men, and because women are often younger than men in most heterosexual relationships, that wives are often the default in caring for their older husbands. Despite women living longer than men on average, the World Health Organization states that women also experience more years of ill health and disability. This is due in part to the fact that women are often the primary caretakers for family members and are more likely to sacrifice their own health to care for others. A 2021 study by the International Journal of Environmental Research and Public Health reports that many of the recognized social determinants of health are worse for women than men. It highlights similarities and differences in socioeconomic statuses, cultural factors, and gendered roles. In terms of health, women are more likely to suffer from chronic conditions such as osteoporosis, arthritis, and Alzheimer's disease which can greatly impact their quality of life as they age. However, continuous preventative measures can increase their chances of staying mentally and physically healthy. The American Geriatric Society's Health and Aging Foundation recommends the following. Regular health checkups. Even if you feel healthy, see your PCP at least once a year. Eat a rainbow. We'll dive into this a bit next week, but nutrition is a big component to healthy aging. In later life, You may need fewer calories, but you still need healthy food. You can get a personalized nutrition plan at the USDA website. 
Take medications, vitamins, and supplements only as directed. Bring everything you take to your annual doctor's visit, even those that you buy without a prescription. It is always a good idea and encouraged to check with your doctor before taking any new pills or medications. Screenings. Certain screening tests help diagnose health problems early. Discuss which tests are appropriate for you with your doctor and get them scheduled. Vaccinations. Discuss which vaccinations are appropriate for you to help optimize your immune system. Most common for older adults include an annual flu shot, an annual pneumonia shot, and a one-time shingles shot after the age of 60. Decrease your risk for falls and fractures. Talk to your provider about calcium and vitamin D intake. Keep yourself active and advocate for a physical or occupational therapy assessment to ensure its safety at home to decrease your fall risk. Use sunscreen. Aging skin is more susceptible to sun damage, increasing the risk of cancer. Quit smoking. It's never too late. Limit alcohol. According to these experts, older women should drink no more than three drinks in any given day or seven drinks total in the span of a week. Exercise your body. See a physical therapist for exercise programs tailored to your specific needs. And lastly, my favorite, exercise your brain. You can see an occupational therapist for cognitive programs tailored to your specific needs. The gender disparity in assumed caregiver roles exacerbates the challenges that older women face. In addition to physical health concerns, older women also face economic challenges as they age. Women are more likely to live in poverty in old age than men are, in part because they earn lower wages throughout their lives and are less likely to have access to retirement benefits. This can make it difficult for them to afford the necessary health care and support services they need as they get older. Despite these challenges, older women also bring a wealth of knowledge, experience, and resources to their communities. They have a unique perspective on the world and are often active volunteers and community leaders. By recognizing and valuing the contributions of older women, we can help to create a more supportive and inclusive society for all. In conclusion, aging is a complex process that affects women and men differently. Women often face unique challenges, including longer periods of ill health, lower economic security, and the assumption of caregiving responsibilities. By addressing these disparities, we can help ensure that all women are able to age with dignity and security. We must also recognize and value the contributions of older women who bring a wealth of knowledge and experience to our communities. Tune in next week for a conversation with a registered dietitian on nutrition and aging. At Caregiver Consulting and Healthy Solutions, we are dedicated to helping you navigate aging together. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you next time.